Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combuzia, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Aura Minerals, which is a gold and copper producer that focuses on the development and operation of gold and base metal projects in the Americas. The company's producing assets include the San Andreas Mine in Honduras, the EPP operation in Brazil, and the Aranzazu Copper Gold Mine located in Mexico. It also has a pipeline of development stage assets, including the Almas Gold Project, where it is poised to start production in the near term, as well as the Matupa and Borborema Gold Projects in Brazil. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Clever Cardozo, who is the Chief Financial Officer at Aura Minerals. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. First, Clever will provide an update on Aura Minerals and give us a look at what the company has planned for 2023. And then in the second part, we'll take your questions live. So please send your questions using the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. I'll note that you can type your questions in at any point throughout the presentation. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into the presentation. So for Aura Minerals, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Aura corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Aura Minerals specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Clever to update you on the company and what you have to look forward to. Thanks, Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for your time here uh, to learn a little bit more, a little bit more about Aura. So Aura, we are a producer company. Uh, we are the worst finding gold, growing gold and copper producer with a focus on the Americas. We're listed both on the TSX, also on the B3 uh, stock exchange in Brazil, and our shares trade on the OTCQX in the United States. A snap, snapshot, uh, quickly introduction, uh, why invest in Aura and, and, uh, and what we have to offer. So first, Aura was ranked the number one uh, on the TSX 30, that uh, it's a ranking published by TSX with the uh, top stock performance for the year uh, across all sectors. Uh, we have been number one in both 21 and 22. Uh, or is a growing story. We grew our production by 78% uh, since 2018. And with three projects operating mines and three growing projects in the Americas, we expect to grow another 86% until 2025. And despite it being a growing story, I would say we are also a dividend story. Uh, we pay uh, significant dividends. Uh, in 2021, our dividend yield was 13.5%, was the highest in our sector in the world. And in 22, uh, we paid equivalent to 6%, including dividends and share buybacks, which put us uh, among the top payers uh, in 22 as well. Before going more uh, details on our uh assets in our projects uh, just a big background of uh, of our story uh our went through a change uh, in control in 2016 the control of the company was acquired by a brazilian family uh, very traditional investors in the mine space they were uh, for example among the other things uh one of the founders of yamana gold early 2000s and in 2016, they saw an opportunity of um, acquiring the control of Aura and first uh, building a turnaround and then a growth story. Uh, since then, in the last years, a lot was done. Uh, new management came in, a new strategy was put in place. And we like to highlight three pillars that we, we have been following here at the company since then are are not rocket science. Uh, the, these three pillars are common among other companies or successful companies, uh, but we, we take them uh, as a foundation of our business here at Aura. First is having high quality assets and projects. Uh, what I mean by that, it, it might seem obvious, but uh, the, the, the right assets or the right project 
uh, is necessary, not necessarily the same for any company. Uh, to give you one example, uh, one of the first uh, steps we took a few years ago was to sell a very large uh, copper project the company used to own in the northeast of Brazil at the time, which had a, a interesting feasibility study numbers, but was too big for the company at the time. Uh, on the other hand, we brought to our portfolio some smaller scale projects, some projects that some people, uh, at, at least the, the mayors, they believe are small uh, projects uh, with uh, annual production between 50 or 90,000 ounces of gold per year, for example, but with very interesting returns among the highest uh, in, in the sector in terms of internal rate of returns, very short paybacks and, and good NPVs. The second one was this building a strong balance sheet. Uh, right now we have, uh, despite growing and despite paying dividends, we have a comfortable cash position and our leverage, financial leverage, 0.5 times uh, net debt over EBITDA. Uh, we have the goal of never exceeding one time because we understand uh, gold and copper, uh, there is a high volatility in these markets. So regardless what happens with the price of those metals in the, in the next few years, uh, we want to continue growing the company. And for that, it's important to work with a low financial leverage. And the third one, and probably the most uh, important pillar is uh, uh, is our team and our culture. Uh, we have uh, been working uh, to build a strong team uh, at Aura and implementing some HR practices that uh, we don't see very often in the mining industry. For example, uh, some uh, in some cases, uh, 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 a more aggressive very compensation that are linked to, to, to ambitious uh, growth targets. Uh, we have evaluation models that are similar among investment banking consulting companies uh, that we implemented here. And with this, we have been able to attract and retain talent that is helping us uh, de deliver the results. A little bit more detail on our culture. Uh, I'd like to share with you here one concept uh, that we have here at Aura, that is our 360, uh, which is um, summarizing the framework we you have here. Uh, this was put together uh, when new management came in in 2017, was uh, improved with the collaboration of the, literally the whole company last year. And basically uh, summarizes what are our values and responsibilities uh, against all the stakeholders uh, that uh, are impacted by our decisions. So uh, this slide is literally uh, before every internal external presentation we have at Aura. It's pretty much embedded in our culture and invite us as decision makers of the company to before implementing any decisions, consider what impact that the decision is going to have in our employees, in the community and environment which are part of, and also uh, in the company, because uh, we, we have also the responsibility to, to deliver shareholder value. Again, this is very strong. This, this, this was born with, let's say, a new management that was built by, by, by all the team. And that this has been also important to, to, to to, to get the results that we have been delivering in the last few years. Uh, quick snapshot on our operations and projects. Uh, you, we have the map of Latin America uh, here on the right side of the page. Uh, in, in red, we have uh, the mines that are currently in operation. Uh, we uh, have Aranzazu uh, copper and gold mine located in the state of Zacatecas, Mexico. That's the only asset in operations, uh, in operation that is uh, generate producing copper. The other two are gold mines, the gold, the San Andreas of Impitipilich gold mine in Honduras. And in Brazil, in the state of Mato Grosso, we have the EPP uh, open pit mine. These three uh, projects together produced uh, 242,000 ounces of gold equivalent in 2022. Uh, and besides those three mines in operations, we have several other projects uh, to grow the company. Highlighted in green, uh, we have 
we, we show three projects we have in Brazil, uh, which are between the stage of very close to construction completion to feasibility study stage. Uh, these three projects are in our business plan. Uh, we expect to put each of them in production, one in 23, one 24, and one 25, and then deliver the close to 80% growth in production in the next few years. And finally, uh, beyond 2025, uh, we have some other opportunities. We have two exploration projects, one in, in Colombia, the, the gold project of Toda Fria uh, has close to 1 million ounces in inferred resource. We're still working to, to, to convert those inferred into measuring indicated. And we have the Serra da Estrela project in, in, in Brazil. Uh, this was a, this is a copper project was uh, recently acquired uh, by Aura. It's in the region of uh, Carajás. Uh, Carajás uh, is one of the most prolific polymetallical area in the world. Is where Vale has uh, its main ore deposit. Uh, so that uh, is still under exploration stage, but might become an opportunity more in the medium and longer term. Then, in terms of results, what was delivered in the last few years? Uh, here in the, the left side, the top of the page, we saw the, the, the increase I was referring to of close to 80% between for our production between 2018 and 2022. There was a steady, steady, steady increase at 18, 19, 20, 21. In 22, we see a small decrease uh, as a combination of uh, lower copper price in 22 than 21, uh, because we convert the, all the copper we produce into gold that, convert, that, that represents less uh, gold ounces uh, equivalent. And some uh, momentary uh, issues, uh, production issues we have in, had in Honduras, but for 23, we already see that we expect uh, to resume the, the growth path. Uh, what is very interesting as well that I'd like to highlight is in our cash costs. If you see our cash costs since 2018, which was of course the database of $832 per ounce, to what we have as a guidance for this year, you're gonna see that uh, we, we, we are, we're seeing single digit increase in cash costs over the last five years. Uh, which has been a, a very strong achievement of our operations team because uh, it's, it's not rare to see increases of up to 30% uh, in, in the market. So uh, <clears throat> with this, we have been able to keep cash costs under control despite all the inflation. That has uh, translated into a, a lower owing sustaining cash costs as well, which uh, based on our 2022 reported numbers and what we expect to see to 2023 put us in as a solid player in the second quartile of the cash cost industry. Then as a combination of increasing production, cash costs is under control and some more favorable metal prices uh, will be observed in the last few years. <clears throat> we see we, we come from a EBITDA of $22 million in 2018 and uh, the, 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 the Two previous two years were low as well, to 120 or over you know, consistently in the last three years, uh, which means the company really started generating cash both to invest in the business and also to uh, to return capital to its shareholders. In, in terms of business model uh, and how we expect to 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 generate shareholder value. Uh, it, it, it's 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 very simple, but has been so far efficient. What we see is uh, for the miners we have in operations, we we need to improve, optimize operational efficiencies. Uh, with uh, those operational efficiencies, we can generate some extra cash, which allows us to invest in either. Uh, increasing our reserves or resources or building new projects, which allows us to expand. Once we expand our production, we we, we optimize the, the performance and create a new cycle, uh, which allows the company continuing growing uh, without increasing our leverage. Uh, for, for example, 
uh, in terms of uh, expansion uh, out, out of the three projects that I, I mentioned at the beginning that we're building. One of them is very close uh, to completion of construction. Almas is close to 99% uh, construction completion. Uh, in April, we expect uh, to issue a press release announcing uh, the full commissioning of the plant. Almas is one example of the projects uh, that I was mentioning before that the company invested, which was for some people with small, but with very interesting uh, returns. Uh, Almas is expected to produce uh, 50,000 ounces uh, of gold per year uh, throughout a 17 year life of mine. Uh, although the total production seems low, uh, the internal rate of return, uh, leverage internal rate of return exceeds 100%. Uh, this was the expectation of the when we released the feasibility study, considering gold prices at 1550. So if we higher gold prices, that internal rate of return uh, per year can go even above this 100%. And the NPV, again, considering uh, lower copper prices uh, of $260 million in a CAPEX uh, of only $75 million, which is a low CAPEX uh, for, for our industry as well. The $70 million CAPEX was announced at the beginning of 2021. Uh, we start construction in 2021. Now in 23, we're almost completed. And we are proud to, uh, to share, to announce that we expect to deliver the project on budget. Despite all the global inflation uh, that has, we have had our challenges, but uh, now it's basically done and, and, and pretty much in the budget of the project. And uh, so almost goes into production by this month already, and uh, reaches commercial production by July, already being the first wave of increase of aura. And then, uh, so almost near completion, then we have other two projects to come. One of them is uh, Borborema. Borborema is in the northeast of Brazil. Uh, we acquired uh, this project in September last year. We acquired acquired 80% of Borborema. We have a joint venture with uh, Dundee Resource, uh, which owns 20% of the project. Uh, Borborema uh, brings uh, a, a, a sizable uh, amount of uh, resource to Aura. It has uh, close to 1.1 million ounces in measured and indicated resources and over 550,000 ounces of inferred resources. All of that JAR compliant. There is a feasibility study what, which was issued in Australia uh, and produced by the previous owners in 2018. Um, and right now what we're doing is we are reviewing the feasibility study with our technical team uh, in order to produce and release a 43101 in the next few months. Our expectation is that this quarter is going to be it's a busy in terms uh, of announcements regarding Borborema. We expect to announce the results of the new feasibility study and also announce the plans of the company in terms of when we expect to start building Borborema, uh, when Borborema should go into production, commercial production, etc. And the third one is Matupá. Matupá uh, is in the same state, the same region uh, where we have our producing mining EPP. Matupá is the area that we know, geologically speaking, the least across our properties uh, because it's not in operation and is the last, uh, last project that we're going to build. So recently we started investing to understand more this deposit. And now uh, uh, with uh, what we did until uh, before 2022, we were able ready to release a 43101 last year, uh, indicating uh, a deposit containing 300,000 ounces of uh, 2P reserves, which could be uh, built by, with a capex of $100 million and generate an uh, NPV of $100 million, in internal rate of return uh, over 50%. So this is still small, uh, but uh, <clears throat> but with a decent returns, and what we're doing right now is since Matupai is not coming in production, 
coming into construction, actually. Probably until 2024, we're keeping the exploration of, uh, of, of these deposits uh, with the intention to increase it before we announce that we're going to go into production, uh, into construction next year. Another thing, that, so Alma's coming next this month in production, Borborema, uh, initially we expect to put in production by the end of 24 in Matupá by 2025. Uh, one thing that is also uh, very favorable in this case is the three projects, uh, they are very similar, especially Almas and Matupá. Borborema is a little bit bigger than Almas, but all of them are the same jurisdiction in Brazil. Uh, the technology CIL is the same, open pit. So we do expect to see uh, many efficiencies from our construction team that was leading Almas uh, when they start taking over and building Borborema and then Matupa. There is a lot of learning uh, that can be uh, translated here. Uh, so in terms of uh, then in terms of opportunities, as mentioning one is uh, increasing uh, our production through the new projects. The second one is uh, the increasing reserves and resources uh, or uh, increased its exploration expenditures from 2000, from eight million dollars in 2018 to over 20 million dollars in 2022. And in 2023, we're expecting to put another 20 to $25 million in exploration. Uh, so just give you a context why we invested so low in the past. Uh, as we saw the company's EBITDA was low, so basically Aura was not generating cash enough uh, to invest in exploration. As the company uh, started generating more cash, we could reinvest part of the cash in our properties, we have over 650,000 hectares across all assets, uh, of which, roughly speaking, geo geological terms, we know about only 10%. So there's a lot of opportunities. And we are already seeing the results. Uh, if you see here in the right side of the page, our uh, 2P reser reserves increased by 6% uh, between 2018 and 22. Our measuring indicator resources, there was a big boom, uh, increased by almost three times. Uh, and we're working already in 23 uh, to convert some of these measuring indicated also in reserves. And finally, when we see inferred resources, we see a small reduction. Uh, but we like to say here that this reduction is a combination of two good news. One is we, we are adding more inferred resources year after year. But the thing is, we have been able to convert significant portion of the inferred resources into measure and indicate it. If you take it to 2022 as an example, uh, in 22, we converted over 100% of our inferred resources into measure and indicated. It means, in, for example, in one area where uh, we had 100,000 ounces of inferred resources after we did some more drill holes and, and were able to convert to into measuring indicated. We end up with 120. So our team have, have been conservative on the inferred, and we're seeing a very good conversions. Uh, and uh, basically, it's paying, it, it, it's showing it's working. Our strategy to put more cash to increase the, the reserves and resources have been working uh, well in the last few years. Uh, and, and finally, in terms of value, we see uh, opportunity of re-rating Aura. Uh, here, I bring you an uh, analysis uh, which was uh, built recently by Raymond James. On the top of the page, for example, is the, the price over net asset value uh, by size of companies. So we see mayor, senior producers, they have a better valuation than intermediate, junior and developers. So size matters. This is the first message here that size matters. So as R is growing, we do expect to move towards the, wet, the, the, the left side of, uh, of the valuation curve and, and see increasing our valuation. And the second uh, takeaway here is uh, even today, compared to our intermediate producers, which are a pure group, we see ours is discount. 
we we believe that announcing almost bringing almost into production um increasing the awareness of our minerals among uh, investors especially in north america keeping investing increasing our resources and reserves we should be able to close to narrow this gap uh in, in the near future and generate shareholder value as a consequence uh here just a little bit more details on what i referred before in terms of dividends uh 21 we were by far the number one in terms of dividend yields uh, uh, in, in, in the world, um, in our sector in 2022. Uh, if we consider only dividends, we would be among top five, uh, but uh, on top of dividends, we had some share buybacks, uh, including share buybacks. Uh, we returned 6% to our shareholders, which would put us as top one and two again in terms of dividend and share buybacks in, uh, in 2022. So overall, as a summary, uh, our uh, we, we have high-quality mines. Uh, the three mines in operations have low cash costs, are generating cash flows. Uh, we have good projects. The projects uh, they have uh, expected low upfront capex, short payback, and high returns. We have a comfortable balance sheet, um, despite the fact that we, so far, we just spend cash building Almas, uh, and we recently acquired Borborema. Uh, we are still an leveraged company, so we are in a good position to keep building, growing. In terms of a business building culture, that has been one of the main pillars of our strategy we believe in the end it's good people who, who delivers results uh the performance uh, of our assets in general we we have seen have, have been positive both in terms of production in terms of cash costs and in terms of shareholder returns if you take the last two years probably we're number one uh, in terms of uh, shareholder return and then what we see as a potential uh very big exploration pipeline uh, 650,000 hectares of mineral rights. A path uh, already very clear to grow the company in the next uh, three years. Uh, growing companies through building new projects uh, sometimes is risky uh, because you have a, o always the risk of being, not being on time on budget. So uh, we, we are proving that we can execute the growth projects by delivering almas. Uh, and we see that we, despite being top one in terms of uh, stock performance on TSX, we're still undervalued and still there is room to, to further uh, appreciation of the shares of the company. And then just to close uh, a quick profile uh, on our capital structure, uh, cash $130 million uh, by the end of the year, uh, we're comfortable cash position. 53% our controlling shareholder who has been leading uh, this strategy. And we have uh, coverage uh, by uh, several analysts, both in Brazil and Canada, with uh, most of them uh, recommending a, a buy on our stock. Okay, with this, I end my presentation, Taylor. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Clever. Uh, so now we'll uh, turn to the Q&A portion of the webinar. And just a reminder to everybody on the line uh, that you can type your questions into the chat at any point. Um, so to get for, get going here, um, maybe let's just uh, talk a little bit about the uh, reserve and resource update that you guys put out the other day. Um, you know, there, there was definitely a very high conversion rate of the inferred resources into the M&I category. Um, you know, going forward, I guess, is there going to be a, an effort to do some more step out drilling, whether that's, you know, you know, laterally or down plunge of these structures to kind of build up that inferred resources again uh, for future upgrading? Is, is that going to be part of that? Uh, so what we have seen, at least in, in the last uh, few years, that has been the story. Uh, for example, in Overall, we converted over 100%, but if you take individual assets, you see the same in EPP in Aranzazu. Both in EPP, in EPP, all inferred resources, we converted 
uh, had converted by 22, 100% we, conf we convert and measure indicator in the same way for runs as well. Uh, why is that? Because most of those uh, inferred resources are in, uh, in, in mines, in, 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 in pits, in which we are already exploring. Uh, we have GH, uh, football and handwell, for example, uh, in, in Mexico, which uh, we knew there was a strong indication that the mineralization uh, would continue down deep. But I think what we, we didn't do was, okay, there was, was better to keep mining and then going a little bit down deep with the mine, and then you could get in a better position to drill and increase. In EPP is the same. In EPP, we're seeing uh, EPP is a mine in which we have one plant and many small pits and uh, satellites. Uh, what we're doing right now in, in terms of these re resources is uh, we, we, we are exploring what we call the connections. Uh, connections is one area between one pit and the other pit. And this is, has been the driver of this conversion, at least in the last few years. So we do expect to see a little bit more of this going forward because we still uh, have more to explore in these other bodies. But now, in, especially in 23, uh, what we are focusing on as well are in uh, regional exploration. That is not probably in Aranzazu, for example, trying to find uh, uh, our body that might allow us to increase uh, not only the life of the mine, but bringing ore to maybe increase the plant capacity in the near future as well. Serra da Estrela is one that is a still early stage. So uh, this year, what we expect to see is, okay, let's, let's we have the goal to have some inferred resources to then uh, going forward to try to, to start converting. So I would say that uh, what we saw in the last two years, we're going to see a little bit, expect at least to see a little bit more of that uh, in, in the near future. Uh, but other than that, we're going to see we're going to open a little bit to the possibilities. Right. Okay. And then uh, with um, the Sarah de Estrella, is there, has any work uh, started there yet? I know that was a, a recent announcement, but you'd, uh... yes, it, it, it has, but uh, still we have no results. Yeah. <laughs> it's early. Yeah, makes sense. Perfect. Okay. Um, the other thing, uh, I guess, in, in that update was um, at San Andreas, there was the, um, essentially a lower cutoff grades, which was achievable due to a decrease in, in mining costs. Um, I mean, you know, maybe you could just provide a bit more color on that. And I know last year there were some struggles there. And, you know, this year the, the guidance is certainly uh, much more uh, bullish on that front and that uh, you kind yeah. of passed that. So maybe if you could just uh, give us an update on that. Yeah, sure. So in San Andreas, um, w w one of the issues, no, when I was... Uh explaining our year over year production we saw increase in all years and we saw some small decrease in 22 which i i, I mentioned uh, was partially due to some uh, no recurring problems we we face in honduras so one of the problems we had in honduras um in the context of global inflation uh we we, we started reviewing all our agreements uh, with different suppliers we're working all mines with a third part with contractors uh, in the mining operations. And basically, um, we, we just bid again the mine, mining contract, which is the, by far the main cost. Uh, we brought in a new mine contractor, uh, which at the time of the change brought some issues because uh, there is the ramp up of the new mine contractor. With this, we, we lost production, uh, we lost some efficiencies, uh, which slowly last year and this year we, we, we were able to recover. But in the end, uh, we lost some production. So that was the bad side. The good side is uh, we were able to get uh, much better agreements in terms of commercial terms. 
Uh, that's why we see that we have been able to keep our cash costs under control. Uh, we are we are having the same inflationary pressures as everyone else, but we're we're just trying to fight back. Uh, so that's one benefit. And the second benefit is, is exactly what you mentioned. As a result uh, of uh, this was the main agreement we reviewed, but not the only one. As a result of all the costs that we're able to push down. Uh, we have been able to reduce the cutoff cut off grade, grade and increase the resources. So that's uh, all this negotiation and changing suppliers that generate some headache in 22. We're seeing like paying off already. Great. Okay. Um, we have a question here from, from one uh, viewer just uh, wondering if there's been any insider buying of the stock in the last year or so. Um, Insider buying, uh, I think so. Uh, it was announced on on SEDI, especially our, our controlling shareholder increased its position from fifty percent to fifty three percent last year. But all according to regulation, it was not on blackout. It was announced on on CDR, uh, early warning reports, etc. Right. Okay. Um, okay, and then uh, just wondering if there's uh, kind of any update or, or thoughts behind kind of sequencing uh, of those development projects. Uh, I know that Aura has the, the longer term vision to, to get up to 4,000 ounces per year, uh, gold per one by 2024, and then 450,000 ounces uh, by 2025. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you did mention in the presentation, uh, you know, having those, having mines come online uh, you know, in, in basically every year until 2025. Um, has there been any formal uh, update on kind of sequencing? Uh, not formal yet. What we're communicating to the markets through our also documents and DNA, etc. Uh, that we both Matupa and Borborema are, in, are, are, are ready to start construction right now. Uh, what seems to us to make sense so far is to bring Berborema first for two reasons. One is a larger project already, uh, has close to 2 million ounces in emerging indicated resources. Uh, Matupa has 300,000. So uh, as a starting point, Berborema is larger. And the second is all the upside potential that we see that it, Berborema, Matupa has. So instead of going in construction now for Matupa is okay, what if we take another year and if we find uh, like uh, more uh, resources and reserves when we start building, it, we, we might announce a larger project. Worst case scenario, we have the, what we announced, which is a, a already pretty good project. So with all of that, it's, uh, it's, it seems it's probably is gonna be Borborema first for all these reasons. But this is going to be formally decided and announced this quarter. So we should issue a press release uh, before the end of this quarter, already announcing which project, timeline, capex, funding, etc. Great. Okay. Um, so I think I'll. I don't see any other questions that have come in yet. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, put out a final call for questions. Uh, in, in, in the meantime, if anybody has any final ones, maybe you can just outline the, the key catalysts that investors should pay attention to here in the, in the near term for Aura. Sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think the, the short term, the, the main catalyst is Almas. Uh, this is going to be, we're going to announce uh, this month. So uh, we believe that... Uh, many uh, investors or potential investors have been watching and are uh, anxious to see almost going production as expected. So both the announcements uh, of uh, almost going production this month and then a commercial production, which uh, we expect to reach by July, I think are going to be very two important milestones and in build as a, a very good market reputation that we're able to build and deliver projects uh, according to uh, announce or, uh, according to what they are announced and the other one is uh is Berborema because there is a lot going on this quarter we we are going to announce the new results of the new feasibility study for 3001 and the decision that the board's going to make on 
Borborema or Matupá, probably Borborema. I know it's still 100% decided, but uh, we're going to announce the next project this quarter. So lots of uh, announcements expected for next three months. Excellent. Okay. Um, so I, I don't see any other questions that have come in. So I think we'll we'll just wrap up there, uh, and that's a good note to end on uh, with lots to look forward to in, in the coming months. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank Clever from uh, Aura Minerals for taking the time today to host the webinar with Red Cloud Securities, and thank you to everybody for tuning in with us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.